Welcome to Directions Live Online. My name is Laura Berman, Technical Director at Esri Australia. So just before we start, I wanted to let you know that we are recording today's session and the recording will be made available shortly after today's session. Okay, so today's topic is getting started with ArcGIS Pro. So we have been looking at the capability within the latest desktop application over the past few months. Uh, but one thing consistently that I had feedback on was a getting back to basics type session. So that's why we're bringing this one to you today. Now in terms of um, a high level agenda about what we're going to cover, we will take you on a little bit of a tour. So we'll sort of have a look at the, the interface. But then from there, we really will just spend the majority of the session taking you through a step-by-step -step common workflow. So looking at visualizing your data, options around editing and analyzing your data before setting out your layout and of course sharing that content. So we'll be looking at, at those options as well. As always, please do ask questions at, at, at any point during the session. I've just popped up um, a little visual there of the questions pane, so that's where you can type in your question. And then at the end, um, we will allow time to, to go through those. So I'm very pleased to welcome our presenter for today, Tal Muzangaza, um, our consultant within our industry solutions team and based out of our Brisbane office. So Tao followed quite a unique path to this consulting side of Esri Australia with stints in both um, in client services, technical support, but also training. So Tao is experienced in using GIS technology for both best practice in urban and environmental solutions, as well as customer and market research. So back in her training days, Tao was very focused on desktop. So is definitely the person who'll be best placed to take us through a focused look at ArcGIS Pro. So I'll hand over to Tar now, who can start taking us on the tour. Thank you, Tar. Thank you very much, Laura, for that warm welcome. And hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today as we take an interactive tour through uh, getting to know ArcGIS Pro. Now, ArcGIS Pro is a powerful WebGIS-enabled desktop mapping application that's been designed on new architecture that leverages 64-bit processing and it lays a solid foundation for optimum performance as well as user experience. Now it enables you to perform mapping in a modern ribbon-based interface that's familiar to other interfaces that you use daily. Uh, think Microsoft Word or PowerPoint where a contextual ribbon interface enables relevant tools and functionality that are specific to your data. Now functionality is displayed in tabs and under each tab there are groups of tools. Tools and functionality windows are known as panes and similar to ArcMap windows, these can be docked within the Pro interface. Now Pro utilizes projects which contain a folder structure that stores and accesses your underlying data. For existing ArcMap users, fear not because you can choose to import existing map documents into Pro. Now, Pro supports multiple 2D and 3D map views side by side for comparison, as well as the conversion of your 2D maps into 3D scenes. Now, for this webinar, I'm using Pro version 1.4, but I'd like to let you guys know that version 2.0 is due for release later this year, so there will be additional functionality and capability with the new release. Now, for your viewing pleasure, I have pre-recorded a couple of demonstrations to try and minimize any technical difficulties. And what we're going to do is go through a workflow using Pro. We'll look at creating a new project and briefly reviewing the interface. We'll also import an existing ArcMap document. We'll run some analysis and finally, we'll go through a sharing exercise. So let's get started. Now this is my ArcGIS Pro sign-in page and as a WebGIS enabled desktop application, I've signed in with my Esri username. Now Pro allows you to access um, existing projects or to create new blank projects. Now for this demonstration, I created a brand new blank project um, because this project will be based on an existing ArcMap document that I have. Now projects contain a folder structure and a folder structure houses the database as well as additional folders where all my data exists. Now once I've created a new folder for the project, it'll open up the Pro interface. 
And this is my pro interface. In the center, I have a project view, and that allows me to look at what's contained within my project, and that's my project structures. I have a project pane on the right and a contents pane on the left, very similar to ArcMap, and my project pane allows me to view all of my folder connections. Now you can add either existing folder connections or connect uh, to a brand new project as we did earlier. Now within that folder connection that I just created, I have my new project as well as databases um, and an existing ArcMap document, which I'm going to import shortly. Now my project view in the center allows me to view all of the projects I have. I have my interactive ribbon-based interface up the top and my content pane um, reacts to what's in my view panel. Now up the top, I have my ribbon-based interface um, and I can see the various tabs that allow me to access additional tools to run um, either processing or functionality for my various layers. Now we'll be able to go through more of these tabs in details as we run through this workflow, but to start with, I'll quickly import an existing ArcMap document and see what it looks like in Pro. Now I've imported an ArcMap document and this is displayed as a map view in Pro. Now you can see all of my layers on the left hand side um, and that's all the layers contained in my original ArcMap document. By clicking on a vector layer I get a feature layer contextual tab and under this feature layer I can choose to change the appearance, the labeling or access the data. Now you can see I can set transparency very quickly via a little swiping tool up the top and I can also access the symbology pane. I really like Pro because it brings up panes on the side of the panel and what I really like about Pro is as I update my symbology you'll find that it'll update in the map view in the center. Now this is really important because color is an influential tool when mapping data because it helps to create understanding and clarity about your map's fundamental message. Now my map at the moment looks really busy, so by accessing the properties through that symbology pane, I can remove the outline color and start to see the distribution of those um, building damage polygons. Now what I want to do is just focus on the polygons that have a damage that is greater than 14. So by changing anything that's equal or less than 14 to no color, I then change the context of the data and start to see the underlying message. Now in Pro, um, map views um, are available within the contents pane and I'll just rename this to my 2D um, map view because I want to compare between 2D and 3D map views. Now, as we saw before, symbolizing data in Pro makes visual analysis really easy. I can quickly and easily change the appearance of my data to highlight specific information. I symbolize 2D data using graduated colors and transparency to highlight changes, and I can also extrude 3D data to highlight density, where extrusion will add a height element to my symbol. I can also overlay data sets on top of one another and then compare the results. And as you make changes in Pro, you can immediately see the outcomes within the view area. Now we'll take a look at um, visualizing and symbolizing data in both a 2D and 3D perspective. So I'll just zoom into um, an earthquakes layer within my map view and by turning on that layer I can see the symbols of the earthquakes um, on the map. Now it's hundreds and hundreds of dots but I do know that my earthquakes layer contains um, Z values. So because of this I can convert my um, entire project or my entire map into a 3D scene. By converting to a 3D scene, I get the capability to start to pan and zoom and tilt my map and see the underlying either height or depth within my data. Now just using um, the uh, appearance, I can also clear the visibility range. That way I'm not um, constrained by any scale limitations. Now for this, I'll just change the name, that way I can see the um, 2D as well as the 3D map views. And what I can do is also choose um, to change this to a local scene. So scenes can be viewed either at a global scale or a local scale um, to see just the extent of the data that I have on my map view. Now because my um, earthquakes layer is Z enabled, I want to allow navigation below ground and I also want to add an elevation source so I can actually look at the terrain of the data within my map.
So by adding that elevation layer, we'll see shortly that I can start to tilt and navigate around the scene and look at the topography and the terrain. Now I also have an existing style uh, or layer file and this layer file contains specific symbology to view my 3D layers. As I mentioned before, um, how you symbolize or color your map is really going to influence um, the data and the story you want to tell. Now I'm looking at uh, the magnitude of the earthquakes and using the explore tool um, I can start to pan and zoom and tilt my map. By tilting I see the terrain and I can also see all of the earthquake data um, below the surface of the ground. I zoomed in a little too far when I made this, I do apologize for that. But I can see as I'm panning and zooming just the different angles um, when I'm looking at that 3D scene. Now this is really taking advantage of the 64-bit processing by symbolizing my 3D data and then starting to pan and zoom. Now another thing that I really like about Pro is I get to link the views. So by linking the views, it means that as I pan or zoom across one map, I pan and zoom across the other map automatically because both of these views are linked. Now notice the little chain link that's appeared um, in the top left corner of the little view tabs. And as I pan and zoom um, across my 2D or 3D, it automatically updates in the secondary view. And just notice how quickly that draws as well, again taking advantage of that 64-bit processing. Now the workflow for editing in Pro is very simple, whether you're creating new features or modifying existing ones. By default, editing is always enabled in Pro and you can edit both 2D and 3D data using the same basic workflows. Now the Edit tab provides quick access to 2D and 3D editing tools, whether you're creating or modifying feature layers or feature services. The Create Features pane enables you to choose a feature template and create a feature, or the Modify Features pane enables tools that amend features. Now you can also choose to create features that share many of the same attributes using the Active Template pane. So now we'll go through an editing exercise for both 2D and 3D data. And again, using just one tool, the Explore tool, I can click on a feature and um, it identifies the attributes that are at that feature. So you don't have multiple tools to do multiple um, uh, interactions. It's one tool for many things. Now what I want to do is create a new station feature on my map and by clicking on the edit tab I can see the different groups of tools. Now the create features pane opens up on the right and I can see my feature templates as well as each of the create features tools that are available for each template. Now before I create a feature I can choose to update existing attributes or add new similar attributes by using the active template pane. Now note that um, with the pane on the right hand side, that active template is directly linked to the specific um, feature we're creating. And um, as I'm updating those, just take a moment to look up at the edit tab. You see the various groups of tools that are available to you, tools to manage edits, um, quickly access snapping, tools to create and modify features, as well as an elevation structure for your um, Z-enabled data. Now once I've updated those attributes, I simply select the tool to create the feature and I can either click on the map to add the feature, but because I have the absolute X and Y, the UTM for this, I can just right click, um, choose the absolute X, Y, add the specific coordinate and press enter. Now once I've added that, you see the new feature has been added um, just to the bottom of those earthquakes and using the explore tool, I can see that all of my attributes have been added there. Now editing in 3D is much the same just by using that um, editing tool but before I start to edit I just want to change the color scheme for the um, current symbols. Now I'm doing this just to change to a purple to blue green so that when I add a new feature it stands out against my existing features. I'll make sure that my selection color is a bright pink that way when I add it you can see the new feature on the map. 
and once I've changed the symbology, it's the same. Access the Create Features pane, select the specific feature template, select the tool, and then choose to either click on the map or add an absolute XY if you know it. Now you'll see once I hit enter, um, the new feature is automatically added again um, to my view so I can see it as I update it. Now I'll explore and earlier I had added um, a depth or Z value here. So by navigating under the terrain, I can also see the depth of that new feature. Now the analysis tab houses Arc Toolbox and enables access to the most commonly used analysis tools as well as geoprocessing options through a new and easy to navigate interface. Now a search function enables you to find a tool and the toolboxes are categorized based on their function so you can search for and find them by function. A geoprocessing tool pane opens on the side of the application so that you can see your data as you set the parameters of the tool. Now, after you run a tool, the geoprocessing pane remains open with all the variables that you set earlier still present. If you want to run the tool again with different inputs, simply change your parameters and choose to run again. Now, you still have access to Model Builder to string several geoprocessing tools together into a workflow, as well as Python for scripting. And those tools are available under the Analysis tab within the Geoprocessing group. Now for analysis, the first thing I want to do is just um, quickly change my elevation and produce a hill shade. Now note the context menu that's come up for my raster layer and under the appearance I'll choose the raster functions, search for the hill shade tool, um, add my elevation and quickly run um, that tool to produce a hill shade output. Now the hill shade is going to be used um, for better context um, for my analysis and I'll turn on the major faults layer so that I can see where those faults lie against the hill shade. Now what I want to do is run some analysis based on the epicenter of specific earthquake and what I'll be doing is creating outputs to show um, how far shock waves or primary waves travel. Now I'll change the symbology of the epicenter there so that it stands out more and that can be the focal point of my processing and my analysis. Now I'm happy with that symbology so what I'll do is access the toolbox under analysis and the geoprocessing pane opens on the right. Now I want to create a multi-ring buffer to show just how far my waves travel. And notice that within the geoprocessing pane, I have the parameters as well as the environments options. I'll quickly update the environments before I choose to run the tool with my specified parameters. Now my input feature is the epicenter since that's the focal point of my analysis. And note that the output feature class is going to be written to the default uh, geodatabase that was created when I created my project and the folder structure. Now what I'm doing is creating an output for primary waves and these travel uh, quickly and fairly far out from the epicenter um, after the initial um, earthquake has occurred. Now I'll quickly run the tool and I'll get an output um, that's immediately added to my map. So I've got my output there and again what I want to do is change that symbology or the appearance of that so that I can see just how far each section of those waves travels. I honestly think symbology is probably my favorite section of um, using Pro so you'll find me going on and on about changing colors um, as well as comparing results using um, the transparency. I'll reverse that order so that you can see that the um, more intense waves are at the center and increase transparency so that I can see just how far those waves travel from the epicenter again in comparison to my hillshade and my fault lines. Now notice how the geoprocessing pane has remained open on the right and I simply change um, the parameters so the output feature class name as well as the distances and very quickly run that tool again. Now this is reducing any processing or analysis time without having to open multiple windows back and forth and just using the axis of the panes. 
Now again, I'll change the symbology. I'll use graduated colors, but this time I'll use a different color scheme to represent my shock waves. Now these don't travel as far out as primary waves, um, but they are more intense. So by reversing that color order, I can then see where the most damage would occur to buildings uh, based again on those secondary or shock waves. By turning on both layers against my hillshade as well as my major faults, I see just how far um, the waves travel as well as the amount of damage that can result from those waves. Now I mentioned before about analysis in 3D. Um, so within my uh, 3D scene, I'm just adding the building damage layer um, to the 3D layers. Again, I'll quickly change the symbology so that we can see the color of these um, buildings once I run an extrusion exercise. I'm quite happy with that color scheme, the purple to red. And by removing the outline, um, I get to just concentrate on the data that actually is relevant to my map and not the um, outline of polygons. So again, under the appearance, I select the minimum height for extrusion, and then I multiply the damaged area by 25 to add a height element to my um, output. Now by quickly running that tool, again, um, taking advantage of my 64-bit processing, I get an output literally within seconds. And I get to start to tilt and view around my scene um, to see my output. And what I really like about running this extrusion is that I actually get to visually um, analyze my data. I can see that the darker and the taller the building, the more intense the building damage is. Now ArcGIS Pro offers several ways to share your maps and data and analysis results, either digitally or in print. Now the most traditional way that we're used to sharing our maps is as printed maps. And in ArcGIS Pro, you can create layouts for export to a PDF file or create packages to share layers, maps, and entire projects digitally. Now Pro also allows you to share the map directly to the web as a web map or layer, and that takes advantage of your WebGIS enabled capability. Whether you want to share maps or entire projects to your organization's ArcGIS Online or to your enterprise portal. Now we'll quickly go through a package exercise and I'll show you the different um, options for packaging. So with a 2D map view, you get to either package a whole project or map, you can share web maps and uh, web layers, or you can choose to export again to PDF file format. It's the same for 3D web scenes, package a map or share a web scene to your organization's portal or online, or export the map to a PDF file. Now earlier I had created a layout, so when I add this layout to Pro, it comes up as a layout view. Now a layout view is very similar to layouts in ArcMap, and I get to view uh, my layout the way I would as a 2D printed map. Now layouts can contain multiple map views within them, as well as map surrounds, so my text, my north arrow, my scale, and legend. And what I'll do is I'll just export this to PDF format to share with my colleague um, for, a result, for a report that she's creating. Quickly exporting that to PDF format, I can then share that with my colleague, for example, via email. Now I will be out of the office for a couple of days, and since I've started creating a new project based on an existing map document, I want to share the entire project and folder structure. Now the package project pane allows me to upload my package to an online account or to save the package to file. Similar to publishing, uh, you simply add a name, a summary, and some tags, and you can choose to share it to your ArcGIS online, um, either to your entire organization or to specified groups um, or to the public. Now in this instance, I've chosen to save the package to file, and I'll just put it on our organization's network. Uh, my colleagues have access to ArcGIS Pro, so they'll just be able to access that and then open up the package. Now at this point, I'm really hoping everyone's super keen and wants to know how do I access Pro to get started? Well, in three simple steps, you'll be up and running. Now you can access ArcGIS Pro software through your organization's My Esri software downloads. But if you're not part of an organization, you can get access to Pro through an ArcGIS desktop trial.
Now, if you or your organization have maintained desktop licenses, then you already have access to ArcGIS Pro named user entitlements. Simply create a new Esri username or use your existing username and then have your Pro permissions entitlements um, added to your username. Once you've downloaded and installed the software, sign into Pro and you're ready to go Pro. Now we'll just recap on some of the points that we went over today. And the first is that ArcGIS Pro is a WebGIS connected and enabled application. Access your organization's existing ArcGIS Online or portal data, or you can easily import existing MXD map documents and data into Pro. You can also choose to link maps and scenes for side-by-side -side comparison. And when you're ready to share, you have many, many options to choose the right sharing method to suit your audience. Now you can access Pro via your organization's ArcGIS online or portal, and if you have maintained desktop licenses, you're ready to go Pro. Now I'll hand back to Laura and see if we have any questions. Thank you, Tar. Um, that was great. Um, really comprehensive and a, a good basic um, overview, especially for someone like me who uses a lot of ArcMap or used to. Um, so we do have a couple of questions that have come in, uh, but there's still time. If you do have a, a burning question you want to ask, please do do so through the questions pane. Um, but just as a start, um, Daniel's asked, what happened to all my ArcMap symbols in ArcGIS Pro? Um, that's a really great question, actually. So fewer symbols were included in the ArcGIS Pro installation to keep it small and fast, but they aren't gone forever. Um, you can import your style files from ArcMap uh, using the import button in the style section. Um, you can also import the ArcGIS Pro versions of these symbols from ArcGIS Online. Now there's a portal tab in the project pane and you can simply just search, search for style X and they'll come up. Okay, great. Um, we have a question from Jay. He asks, um, how hard is it to convert existing Python scripts in ArcGIS desktop into a Python script used for Pro? Um, that's a really great question. Um, it's not difficult at all. You should be able to import and use that Python script again um, in Pro. Um, now there's a more comprehensive and detailed answer if you go to the frequently asked questions that does give more um, context about specifics for the type of script you're using. But it's very easy. You use, um, simply import your script into Pro and you're ready to go. Okay. So that frequently asked questions, is that on the Esri Australia page? Uh, the frequently oh, asked oh. questions is actually under the pro.arcgis.com. There's a frequently asked okay. questions section there. Oh, great. Um, we might send a link to Jay so he can find that easily. Sure. Um, okay. So another another question's come through from Stuart. Um, he asks, um, I have a single use license, so how do I access ArcGIS Pro? It's a really, really good question. So with single use licenses, um, you get access to a named user entitlement as well as the same level of ArcGIS Pro. So what you do is go to your organization's ArcGIS Online account and under Manage Licenses, you just assign the Pro uh, license to your username. Now your Pro license will come at the same level of your desktop single use license. So if you have the basic or standard or advanced, you'd have the same level for your Pro. Once you've assigned it, you just simply um, install and open up Pro and sign in with that username. Okay, great. Um, okay, and one last question we've got coming through from Kate. So, um, so obviously Pro uses, um, you can view and use 2D and 3D data. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is the 3D analyst extension required for ArcGIS Pro if you're working with 3D maps and layouts? That's a really good question, actually. And the short answer is no. You don't have to have the 3D analyst extension, but you can still navigate, author, and edit, and share 3D scenes and maps. Now, you'd want to use the 3D analyst extension um, only if you're performing 3D analysis. So if you have a specific need to run a geoprocessing tool in the 3D analyst toolbox, then you'd need the 3D analyst extension. For all of the um, processes and analysis I did today, I didn't have the 3D analyst um, extension turned on. That was all just inherent as part of Pro. Okay, that's really good to know. Um, 
Okay, well, thank you everyone um, for your um, for attending today and for your questions as well. Um, just to cover off on what's next, so next Thursday um, we're taking a bit of a look in the utility space, but um, specifically looking at the solution templates that are available through ArcGIS. Uh, so Dan Simo, our local utilities industry specialist, will be joining us. So he'll be taking us through a practical um, workflow for applying one of those solution templates. Um, in terms of um, feedback, do please let us know. Like I mentioned at the start of today, the reason we um, put on today's session was based on your feedback and I really appreciate it. Uh, so please fill out the survey, let us know what you think, um, but also you can email us at any time um, at events at esriaustralia.com.au. Um, also, if you do want to re-watch this recording um, or maybe share that with your team, we will make the recording available um, shortly on the Esri Australia events page and in fact you should receive um, an email with a link to that early next week. Now before I go, I can't not mention Osri. Um, registrations are now open. Um, it's great to see lots of people are registering, so make sure you don't miss out. Uh, we'll be coming to Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane in August. Um, if you go up online, you can have a look at the program. We've started to release a lot of the sessions that will be available, including a session by TAR around, you guessed it, ArcGIS Pro. Um, so, Ty will be taking a bit of a, a deeper dive into some of the, the workflows through Pro. So you've got the basics and now we're going to start building on that as well. So really look forward to seeing you um, at Osri, so make sure you register. So for now, um, I'd just like to thank you again, Ty, for today's session. and um, Thanks everyone for joining us um, and we will see you um, next week.